Every year, I always like to sit back and try my best to evaluate the year in terms of gaming. I always like to have a wide variety of games that I get to play, maybe get surprised on a couple, find a new genre, get invested in a new multiplayer game, or try to get as few disappointments as possible and play a bunch of games with my friends and make memorable moments that I can look back at. And some years are better than others, and when most everything clicks, I get a wonderful year like 2019. I'm going to start with a big game so you can relate. Resident Evil 2 Remake. As someone that is not a huge Resident Evil fan, only playing 5 co-op with my sister, which is fond memories by the way, and then 4 and 7, this clearly is the best one in a damn good action horror game. The police station with all of its puzzles to solve, hidden stashes of loot, and the Terminator that you always have to be aware of sets an eerie mood. It's also got the inventory management that is never enough at the beginning and then you have more than enough ammo than you'll ever need to mow down all the zombies like it's a riot in America. Bleed 2 is a hidden gem that can be beaten and refunded on Steam if you want to be a Jew and play on easy. But true gamers would play this on the hardest difficulty. Why might you ask? Because it's a boss rush game. With different patterns the higher the difficulty goes. Difficulty done right, finally. With over 25 bosses you get the most boss per hour than any other game. Joking aside though, I really enjoy this game for its fast bullet health, slow mo parry ninja gameplay that made me want more. As Stardew Valley four years ago introduced me to the life simulation style games, I've yet to find one that wasn't either a direct clone or reskin. So after hearing so much praise about my time at Porsche not being a reskin of Stardew Valley, boy was I excited. Then you play it and you get disappointed. Combat is worse than a mobile game. Voice acting was both laughable and immersion breaking. Am I gay? Why does he sound so bad? I was fixing the cave power generator. Is this what gay people feel like when playing as a straight character? Mining was more tedious. Overall lack of polish made this a chore to play. It was made by a Chinese developer, so one more reason to hate them. The other being COVID-19. If I were to describe a game as a playable Michael Bay movie, as a compliment, not negative or ironically, but as in having a blast, I didn't know how well x Morph Defense was going to be until my eyes orgasm from the visual porn happening on screen. It is a tower defense and those can be pretty passive and come very stale once you get late in the game. But since you play as a ship with kick-ass weapons starring Interstellar's Black Hole as one of them, you need to keep your turrets, managing enough tasks to always feel engaged and fight some fun bosses that will make you actually enjoy a tower defense game. There was this game that was going to put all other looter shooters to shame. From one of the best developers, Bioware, came Iron Man the video game. It takes a special form of retard to make a game that looks and plays like this be boring. I've yet to enjoy a looter shooter, I think it's inherently a bland genre. Well at least I got to finally play Mass Effect 3 10 years after it came out, so thanks Anthem. Now I went to a game that it was so damn fun I dare call it my most favorite game I've ever played. Slay the Spire is the pinnacle of games. A deck building based roguelike, two of my least favorite genres that had me replay for so much more than any other game to date, when no other roguelike or highly replayable game never gets played after seeing half or nearly all of its content, even beating out the infamous Factorio and Terraria, the depth and challenge of this game is so perfect and being able to play in short bursts makes it even better. I heard it's coming to mobile, actually correction it is coming to mobile, so here goes my social life, what little I have left. No. No. There's no way! There is absolutely no way! No way! No freaking way! <laughs> God! No way! Battle Brothers was a game I was looking forward to playing for years, waiting for DLC to be finished to get the complete experience. A turn-based, permadeath, deeply tactical game. The level of customization for your bannermen and holding lines with shields and spearmen and pikes for attacking from behind. The tacticalness of this game was just mm, oozing through the roof. But then the repetitive nature sets in. Sadly, it turned out to be a boring procedural fetch quest and the tedium of trying to progress through the game when constantly losing to RNG and reloading versus restarting from scratch would be a huge waste of time. This is designed to be a roguelike and it should not have been. It brought me to not finish this game despite it appearing at first to be so freaking cool. Battle Brothers was my most disappointing game of 2019. When I look at new games to play, I always pay attention to the ones that people praise, and you can get duds like My Time at Porsche or Battle Brothers. 
Sometimes you get surprised and you get shadow tactics, a stealth game with an interesting story that had me hooked, a rarity in most games, but also having each level playing out differently, both from the layout and the characters given that prevented me from getting bored from the usual staleness that comes from a slow paced stealth game. It also doesn't hurt that you're a bunch of badass ninjas and has the best implemented save system ever created by mankind. A must for all stealth games in my opinion. Ah, I'm out. Quick. Keep your thumb out. Stay down. Gotcha. Holy crap. That's like 30 minutes of planning. Oh, yeah, brother. A game that looks like a lesser XCOM at first, but once you see the depth Druidstone offers, you'll be pleasantly surprised with each character offering plenty of choices with each armor, ability, and weapon being pretty balanced. No super OP metas here. This game plays well into a puzzle strategy game more in the likes of Into the Breach than, say, XCOM, which is a great new subgenre of the turn-based strategy games that I'm starting to love. You get a lot of side challenges which require you to kill a creature in a set amount of time, save all the cute black creatures from the big bad cops, or get all the treasure chests. I'm glad to see the developers of Legend of Grimrock not being a one-hit wonder. A good puzzle game is hard to get right. Most feel either too simple, too random and guesswork, but when it hits just right, you get Baba as you. At first it might seem simple, rearrange words to change the rules to achieve the flag. This game has the most amount of levels and not a single one ever felt repeated, padded, or boring. It doesn't hold your hand, which is fun, and for a few instances, pretty hard to grasp what the game even allows you to do in its world. There are a few puzzle games that deserve the instant classic title, and this one will go down as one for sure. An easy sell to me is to take the Doom style gameplay and replace all the standard weapons with insanely badass magical variants where the rocket launcher shoots planets and when powered up shoots entire suns. It's so badass that alone sold me on it. Each weapon has that meaty and powerful feel that everybody wants, on top of having level design that is both trippy at times, but still manageable to navigate. A medieval is a worthy Doom clone. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. As I have yet to experience a game blending RPG and strategy game in one, and Blizzard killed Warcraft 3, I found the new king, Spellforce 3 Soul Harvest. The RPG combat was more enjoyable than Pillars of Eternity 2, it had an easy to follow story despite not playing the main entry, and the RTS side never had me get bored as you always played as a new faction alongside your heroes. I was surprised at how much depth this game had for a hybrid game and how it condensed a 60 plus hour into easily half of that. From the best Fallout creators came their next attempt at creating a new generation of RPG Outer Worlds that I was excited to play. I don't get why everyone loved it so much though it's so mediocre stale and easy combat pushed to the limits by a world with so little variety no jamming radio tunes like mr new vegas that could be filled with corporate joke ads that the game already had and could fill the empty void and personality in the open plains it's hard to believe it was made by the creators of new vegas i just think developers elsewhere have raised the bar and obsidian didn't realize it Casual city building games usually bore me. It's a glorified creative mode without any real progression. So when Anno 1800 came out and proved me wrong, I was surprised at how fun the game was. Building up chains of goods, setting up trade routes, even having the simple ship combat to take islands if you can't buy them out, destroy enemy trade routes while protecting yours. Ubisoft can make a good game when they don't follow a stale formula. I mean, Tarkov's an alright shooter. I mean, it was the only game I played for six months completely absorbed my entire life that time ignored every responsibility I should have done don't worry I'll make a full video because there is so much I could talk about this game when every other game is trying to copy Dark Souls from software decides to once again reinvent the formula with Sekiro Shadows Die Twice no more iframes and it's forcing you to actually get good for real this time by having the whole game revolve around using that sweet samurai sword to parry the shit out of everyone. It's the best one they made yet. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night sounds more like a horror documentary on a teen cult centered around menstrual cycles than an actual game. But I'm a sucker for a good Metroidvania game, and I like to get at least one good one a year. Apparently this one was made by the OG himself, Buck Choi. This is the most anime game I've played so far. Well, actually, that would be Battle Chef Brigade. Realizing Twitch does give you free games by linking your Amazon account to your Twitch account and subbing to your favorite streamer 
It's basically your standard anime story with match three style cooking in an Iron Chef style competition, getting set ingredients in a action side scrolling platformer. Yeah, it's super weird, but oddly refreshing. Which basically describes all things Japanese. I'm a sucker for any and all things medieval. I don't know, something about the period just appeals to me. Movies and TV shows, doesn't matter what it is. So having the most simulated ye olden time game with such a unique combat mechanic was amazing. The game isn't high fantasy, but makes up for it in a rather simple and familiar revenge story that brings you into this wonderful world with characters you'll relate to. But the best thing about this game is the progression. The game is hard, and your character and you both can't fight at all. Your character is in some power fantasy night, and the controls to fight are weird at first. Blocking and attacking using your mouse at the right time takes practice. You then get better gear and weapons. You master the game, and you might be able to take on a few guys. That's what he said? It was weird having the game end so abrupt and basically tease the sequel, but Kingdom Come Deliverance left me smiling and satisfied. So I'm going to end it here with a fun little montage of other games I also enjoyed. A lot of them being with my boys to sum up 2019. What a year to end the decade in. He's gonna have as well. Oh my god. Oh my god, are we actually gonna kill this guy? Oh my god. Okay, I think I just. No, 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 Oh yeah, I'm gonna take you for a ride. No, 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 no! I'm on level 50 monsoon and I'm just one-shotting everything. I'm like, when am I ever gonna get to that point where I'm just one-shotting everything? I've, I've made it. Oh, I got it. Hell yeah. Get that upgrade again. Okay, maybe let's not. <laughs> <laughs> what the Okay, hell? dude. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm fucking dead! <laughs> I win! Oh, he's Whoa. very so excited to see us. Oh, Look, oh, oh, so Texas hop in! Man. Up in! Texas hop in! Up 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 in! <laughs> Gosh dang it, Josh! I just, I just, I realized what you were doing a little too late. You got me to push right behind you. Yeah. Ready? Yep. I'm dead. I hit him twice. Got him, got him, got him. Damn, girl, you thick. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> she looks like she's in stretch. Can we? <laughs> Dude, she's not just thick, she's stretch rest thick. <laughs> what was fun? Wow. You stay gay, man. You're like. What are Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my 
wish I could do this, man. <laughs> Are you guys in the Josh, Josh, Josh? <laughs> I think you should choose Lord. Oh, dude, what are you? What's up, dudes? Wait, are What's you up, dippy dude? Pippies? Like, wait, so it allows you to watch porn, but you can get porn for free on anywhere just with ad block. Dude. That's not the point. It's the self self help app. Oh, not a self help app. That it's like you. if you want to fap. <laughs> If you want to watch porn, you have to watch these shitty ads. I just Better love that it's like, you, you, you get to, it's like, imagine that for a drug addict. You're like, hey man, you've gone three days without taking any meth. Here's some meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.